A secret file containing details about unnatural sexual behaviour at Westminster was not disclosed to a government-backed review into claims of child abuse by high-profile figures. Sky News can exclusively reveal the existence of the document, but the head of the NSPCC, who led last year's investigation, says no one alerted him to it. Sky's Tom Parmenter reports. First, we will do everything we can to allow the full investigation of child abuse and the prosecution of its perpetrators. We're going to leave no stone unturned to find out the truth about what happened. The promises go right to the very heart of Westminster. We now know the department responsible for the smooth running of government is sitting on a potentially significant file. We're looking at Prime 19, but if we do an advanced search... Finding old documents is part of Chris Murphy's job. So there's quite a few big security issues within these files, like Iranian hostage situation, Irish terrorism. Absolutely. And as I, as I say, unfortunately, quite a few of them remain... Uh, closed. But within these vast archives, he found one that made him stop. And there it is, allegations against former public of na unnatural sexual proclivity security aspects. I think I did a double take and then started wondering what the potential implications of the title, which is a little vague, um, could be. It was the year after Margaret Thatcher had swept to power. Where there is error, may we bring truth. It's highly likely she saw the contents, documents prepared for the Prime Minister about the sexual practices of somebody of note. 35 years on, it's still classified on grounds of national security. The file is held by officials based here at the Cabinet Office on Whitehall. They've confirmed to us that it still exists. They've also confirmed to us that it is still too sensitive to release. But they have made this promise, that any document that may be relevant will be released to the inquiry into historical child sex abuse. Just last November, these men published their report that searched for government files that may be relevant. Peter Wanless, the chief executive of the NSPCC, has today said this specific file was not revealed by any department or individual we consulted. If there is pertinent material in this file, it should be submitted to the sexual abuse inquiry as well as the relevant police force so they can conduct a criminal investigation if necessary. It's not acceptable that discoveries of files of this nature come about purely by chance. It is essential that there is a systematic trawl through of old files and archives to establish whether there is anything else lurking or hidden that needs to be brought to light. Thatcher's press secretary, Sir Bernard Ingham, has told Sky News he cannot recall the file, but that she was certainly aware of allegations against a minister. Sir Bernard wasn't able to go on camera, but we asked him, was anything done about this particular minister? He replied, well, I assume the police looked into it. We asked, did the government investigate the minister? Sir Bernard said, well, I asked him about it and he denied it. So no, I didn't do anything else. What was the alternative? There is no question that there was a cover-up at the time. What's even more startling is that that cover-up seems to be still going on today. Whatever the reasons for keeping things secret in the early 1980s, they are not good reasons for not making them available to the police the inquiry and indeed the public today. We know people in Westminster three decades ago were sexually abusing youngsters. The Met Police are now investigating whether children were killed at nearby Dolphin Square. Survivors of all kinds of sexual abuse have individual stories, but they agree on at least one thing. It's time for today's politicians to keep promises, not secrets. Tom Parmenter, Sky News, Westminster. Tony Blair has insisted he is not responsible for delays.